What's up guys, it's CJ from SmartKTAD.com and today we're looking at the software side of Sprint Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch Smartphone. This handset currently runs Android 2.3.4 Gingerbread and Samsung's TouchWiz 4.0 user interface. And since this is one of Sprint's high-end flagship smartphones, I imagine they'll update it to the recently announced Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich sometime next year, though there's no official word on that just yet. So enough speculation. Let's see what we're working with as of this moment. First, I'm going to turn off the display so we can get a look at the lock screen. So here we have a pretty basic lock screen. And if you have some notifications like missed calls or texts, a slider will appear and then you can just slide to unlock directly to those apps. But I don't have any, so I'm just going to swipe the image away to unlock the device as so. And here we are within our uh, home screens. So first thing I like to do is swipe through to get an idea of performance and as you can see it's super smooth in fact buttery smooth I've been uh, reviewing this device for a while and I can say uh, with complete honesty that uh, this device does not lag at all it does not disappoint with speed I have not noticed any lagging qualities whatsoever and that's pretty surprising because even the most powerful device devices will lag every once in a while and this one seems to uh, perform pretty well so probably the most uh, powerful device I've handled to date. And we'll go ahead and begin by first pulling down the window shade here, the notification shade. For those of you new to Android, this is where all your notifications will show up. So you get your missed calls, texts, uh, emails, or app updates, anything of that nature. You'll get those uh, brought up in the notification shade. So one thing I like to point out here is Samsung likes to put quick togglers inside of the notification shade so you have quick access to enable or disable uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound and 4G very convenient feature every manufacturer should do that with their whoops, Android phones there we go finally got that to close so we have seven home screens to customize and set up with different apps and widgets if you want to get an overview of the ho home screens you can pinch out and then go directly to whichever screen you're looking for. You can also customize the layout by tapping and holding and swapping them out, but we'll leave it how I already had it. And also, if uh, say you wanted to uh, jump to a particular home screen while using the, hand, the phone one-handed, you can't really pinch the zoom one-handedly, right? So you just tap on the corresponding indicator dot right here, and it'll take you directly to that panel. So multiple ways to do the same thing. That's always nice uh, for users who want uh, different options. So down here we have our fixed shortcut bar. So that has uh, our app tray, which is obviously going to be permanently fixed. But these three icons next to it uh, can be customized with whichever app shortcuts you want. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But let's first go into the app tray, check out our apps here. And if you press menu, we can change the view type so maybe you want a list form if you don't like the grid you can do that alphabetical grid is basically the same as the uh, customizable grid mode except everything is in alphabetical order but uh, the layout is the same uh, so the customizable grid is probably the best because you can actually go into editing mode and you can swap apps around change the order however you want you can even drop some in a folder you can create a new page and then of course you can swap out uh, these uh, doc shortcuts down here so if I wanted to put a dialer in there I can do that and then we just click yes and see we have another uh, new app page there and also a folder with some apps that we put in also if you look at the bottom dock bar I now have a dialer there to access alright so let's go ahead and go back to the app tray and I want to show you that you can also pinch out here to get an overview of all your app screens so we'll close that out and go back home. Now let's go ahead and tap and hold on the screen. 
So here's how we can add some widgets, apps, or change the wallpaper. Uh, you can also do that by pressing the menu button as so we get some other options here like your settings and editing the home screens things of that nature but we'll just go to add and check out some widgets so here's a nice uh, way to add widgets you can actually change the home screen up here and then cycle through all of your widgets down here so we have some clocks email I'll go ahead and add the email widget you can see it just adds it right away tutorials we don't really need that so those are all your Android and Samsung widgets so here we have a basic email widget I don't really need this here so I'm gonna close out of that so let's go ahead and go back here and I might as well switch up and enable a wallpaper, a live wallpaper. See, I don't need to do any settings there. Just want to show you that even with a live wallpaper running, the device runs very, very fluidly. Pull up the app tray, transition, transitions without a hiccup. Okay, so let's swipe over and check out some of these widgets. So here's a gallery widget, and I'm going to tap and hold on that, and then we get some grid lines to show that we can resize it, and depending on the widget and size that you uh, set it to, you, the information will actually adjust to fit better. So that's always nice. Below that, we have an AP Mobile widget that will take us directly into the application, which is preloaded on the device. That will keep us updated with news. Calendar widget, month view, and agenda view below that we can tap to go directly into the app clock widget up at the top weather widget swipe through multiple cities and tapping on different aspects will actually dive into the AccuWeather website swipe over here's our wireless communications and power widget we can access more options by tapping on the dots task manager so here's our list of running applications and we can exit out of those if we want and check out RAM and storage info swipe over again actually you can see we have some voice uh, functions here we'll come back to that and I want to show you the resizing feature so here we have the weather widget it's got a different view for the smaller size we can adjust it get another view there adjust it again for uh, the full size view and cut it in half and you get another uh, variation there it's pretty cool that you can do that now let's come back to the voice widget so most of you probably know that Android phones have built-in voice activated features so we'll check those out here are the different options here that you can do with voice actions built in by Google but Samsung actually uh, decided to add their own. It's actually powered by uh, Vlingo. So I'm not sure if uh, most of you are familiar with that, but there's a third-party application that's free in the Android market called Vlingo, and that'll give you similar uh, voice-assisted functions. So let's check it out. First, we'll start with voice command. And that gives us basic options that we can do. So say you want to you know, do a map of, uh, or pull up a map of, let's try this out map of Empire State Building alright so here is the Empire State Building and we'll zoom in on that so there it is in all its glory we'll go back oops there we go you can also do a Twitter or Facebook update Twitter update I'm filming a video I'm filming a video. There it goes. Go back home. Let's go back into that. See some other options. You can get directions, record a voice memo, contact somebody, uh, send a message. So if you just say send a message to so and so and then say message and then say whatever text you want, it'll do that all for you. Contact. You can set an alarm. That's convenient. 
open applications. Let's try opening something. Open quadrant. All right, so opened our uh, favorite benchmarking application, Quadrant. That was installed as a third-party app from the market. So cool that it recognizes that. Now let's go into Voice Talk. So here we have a different setup. This is more geared for uh, accessing your device using your voice while driving. So we can do calls, texts. Uh, let's see what happens. Who would you like to text? And then you're supposed to say who you want to text and the message. Where would you like to go? Same with driving, playing music, and if you tap driving, driving mode, mode, new notifications will be read right back. So it tells you that notifications will be read back to you, which is super convenient if you want to do hands-free driving, right? So you can also activate it. You don't have to tap anymore. You can just leave it as is and just say the magic code word. Hi, Galaxy. What would you like to do? And then you just say what you want to do. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though. We already checked out some of those features in the other mode. All right, so let's go back into the app tray once more. And here we have all the applications that come pre-installed on the device. We have AllShare, which allows us to share media files between multiple devices through DLNA. And we have Google Books, calculator app, pretty basic. Calendar, we already checked that out. Camera. Now, we actually did a separate video uh, to check out the camera features and settings. So if you want to see all the software for the camera, be sure to check out that video. I'll link it in the description below. So I'm not going to go over this right now because we already have that lengthy review. So here's a clock app for alarm, world clock, stopwatch, and timer features. Downloads, gallery, email, pretty standard fare. Uh, it does come with a new Android market. Swipe over, messaging, and we'll open a new message. Now it comes with a swipe pre-installed, so if you want to swipe out words, you can do that. Uh, let's test it out. This is cool. So you can swipe out words uh, with only having to lift your finger between those words, which is pretty nice. You don't have to tap out each individual letter. Now if you want a more traditional keyboard, you can swap that out for the Samsung keyboard. All right, I'll close that out. And just to show you, you do get chat bubbles, colored chat bubbles, to differentiate between sender and receiver. Close that out, Media Hub. And this is where you can come to uh, buy or rent movies or TV shows. So how about we just go ahead and tap on one. And you can see we can rent one for $3.99 or own it for a ridiculous amount or watch the preview. All right. So I'll close out of there. Line that up real quick. All right, so we have a music app. I don't have anything loaded up in here. File Explorer, that's built in. A Sprint app, that's for NASCAR. Uh, Google Nav. Photo editor. Let's just pull that up real quick. So you have some basic photo uh, editing options. You can rotate. All right. So that's the photo editor app. I keep missing the back button. That's not because of the device. I just keep tapping outside of the touch area. Uh, so we have Polaris Office for uh, viewing and editing office documents. Setting Social Hub for uh, all your social media and messaging needs. And then we have some Sprint bloatware, I guess you would call it. So Sprint Hotspot, maybe some of you guys use that. If you don't subscribe, you probably don't ever want to see that there. Uh, Sprint ID to change between multiple themes, uh, Sprint Mobile, Sprint Music Plus, 
Sprint Radio, Sprint TV, and Movies, and Sprint Zone. Actually, let's check out if we can remove some of these. And you can see we have these little minus uh, buttons, so I believe you can. Let's go ahead and try that. And yeah, you can remove it, so that's always nice. And then we have a Task Manager. We already looked at that, actually. Uh, Telenav GPS, so that gives you another navigation option. Sprint likes to add those uh, to their devices. Video Maker, so similar to the photo editing app, you have one for editing videos, so you can add a theme to it. And you can select a video. What's up, guys? It's CJ. <laughs> and then some other options as well. Add in some photos, and then you can finish that up. And before we conclude the video, let's go over the shortcuts I have in the bottom dock. So we have a dialer. We can't go without showing that since this is a phone after all. And because of the large 4.52 inch display, you can see the keys are absolutely huge. No problems dialing out with those. And then we have email app. So we can check out different messages here. You can see it has an all black theme but you can change the background color to white, beige, dark gray, or black. Go back and we can switch to landscape view. And that gives us a different view. So now we have our messages over here and we can read them on the right side. Pretty cool. So that allows us to quickly switch between different messages and manage them. Go back home pull up the browser, scroll around, very fluid, pinch the zoom action, see how close we can get, very very clear, again that gorgeous Super AMOLED Plus technology is fantastic uh, for web browsing. And also if you pick up the device and put two fingers on the screen at the same time, see if we can get this there, we can zoom in and out that way. A little strange. I'm not sure if anyone actually uses it. If you do, let me know because I'm not sure I would want to do that over the traditional pinch to zoom style. Also, if we zoom all the way out, you get an overview of all of your open tabs. So very convenient to switch between tabs. Here's in Gadget. Scroll around there. go back to smartktide.com and jump into a post here so we can check out some flash content. So I'm going to load up this video, zoom in a little bit. Let that buffer up. What's up guys, it's CJ from Smart and there it goes. And today we're checking out a cool new Android game called Wind Up Night. By robot invader and it's one of those running platformer type games all right so uh, this was the browser on the Galaxy S2 and we'll jump back out so this was the software overview of the Sprint Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G touch we'll have the full review posted at smartktai.com in the next day or so so stay tuned for that if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and as usual thanks for watching